Welcome to part two of our video series on the myth of common law marriage. In this video, we will explore the legal concept of living together as a married couple, what it means, how it's interpreted in the courts, and how it affects your benefits entitlement. Common law marriage, the idea that living together gives you a marriage-like legal status, is mostly a myth except when it comes to benefits entitlement. So what is living together as a married couple? Living together as a married couple is a status that affects benefits calculations and entitlement. In essence, if you are cohabiting with a partner, same or opposite sex, you are treated as married for benefits purposes. This means that means-tested benefits will be calculated based on your combined income and capital. Your partner's employment status will also be considered when your entitlement is assessed for many forms of benefit. The Social Security Contributions and Benefits Act 1992 introduced the term living together as a married couple or what the Department for Work and Pensions abbreviate as LTAMC. Before 2014, same-sex cohabiting couples were considered living together as civil partners, and living together as a married couple was reserved for opposite-sex cohabitees. But today, living together as a married couple is considered a gender-neutral gender concept. The 1995 Job Seekers Act put this concept into full use in decisions about means-tested benefit. Schedule 1 of the Act empowers government to make regulations aimed at clarifying just what living together as a married couple means. How do the courts interpret living together as a married couple? Mr. Commissioner Howell, QC, described living together as a married couple decisions as one of the most difficult problems of definition there could be, since it involves investigating and analyzing the nature of a human relationship between two people, and this is inevitably a complex and sensitive thing. In short, there are no definitive criteria for living together as a married couple in law. Each case must be decided on its own particulars. But there are a couple of assessments the court might use to work towards an answer to whether you are living together as a married couple. First, what's called the three-part assessment looks at the nature of your relationship with respect to sex, finances, and in general. Alternately, or sometimes in addition to the three-part assessment, the court may use what's called the six signposts test. This looks at each of whether you're members of the same household, the stability of the relationship, whether either or both of you offer financial support to the other, whether you're in a sexual relationship or have children together, and finally, whether you publicly acknowledge a marriage-like relationship, for example, to family and friends. Again, neither of these tests is definitive. Every relationship is different. But the court will often consider one or both of these tests when making a decision. So, are you living together as a married couple? Well, that's for you and the Department of Work and Pensions to decide though DWP usually have the final say. If in doubt, notify the DWP and ask them to assess whether you count as living together as a married couple. If you don't like their decision, you have the right to appeal it. On the other hand, if you fail to disclose a cohabitational relationship that DWP consider living together as a married couple, you could be liable for overpayment repayment as well as civil charges, and possibly even criminal prosecution. For more information, please see the Open Justice Clinic's leaflet on cohabitation and benefits. 
You can also access advice and guidance through your local citizens' advice branch and from other organizations, including Law for Life, Stonewall, 